video, we're going to take a look at the RAM chip and memory address register chip for uh, BB0.2 in a little bit more detail. Uh, first off, definitely a big thank you to Ben Eater for his video series. Uh, link in the description below to see exactly what he does for his RAM and memory address register. Uh, we're going to be replicating a lot of that, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail. I'm, I'm mostly just going to be doing some demonstration with it. And, uh, and actually, we won't go ahead and start this up because I, I want to show you first exactly what's going on inside of the RAM right when the computer is first opened up. So when we reset the computer or when we first open the circuit file, what we have is nothing. Everything is completely blank, set to zeros. So when I first constructed this, um, I kind of went ahead of myself by a few steps. I didn't really think about how do I actually manipulate the values inside of my RAM chip. I just went ahead and built a RAM chip that could be controlled by the computer. Um, in many eaters videos, he actually has a pot that he can, you know, manipulate each of the bits and then manually input them. And that's how he programs his 8-bit computer is he sits there and, and, and determines the binary values for each of the commands and puts them into the RAM. And, and that's all well and good that that's what he does. For me, I wanted to go ahead and do that and then realize there was no real way to do that. So I had to build an entire system, which we'll, over, we'll, we'll go into in another video um, to load all of this in. Um, so uh, apologies for the airplane going by overhead. Uh, they're working. I, I live right by the airport in, uh, in Anchorage. So uh, what we need to do is first let's run this program just enough to see exactly what it's going to do. So we've already seen this perspective, and this is another weird thing. I don't know why it, you know, Logison does that uh, because I, I had scrolled down the view over there, so I guess it just kind of scroll down the view in total. But here, let's actually go ahead and run the program and watch the RAM chip load with all of the values. So we'll hit Control K, start the simulation. And one at a time, we're going through and loading every single value that's inside of our memory. Now, we only have five instructions and two variables. And now the program is executing. And we'll see this memory address 14 uh, have uh, the we're counting in fours so we see the uh, value of four now eight and then shortly after we're going to see 12 and 16 and so forth so let's go ahead and pause real quickly so the address decoder um, again Ben Eater goes into the explanation of this far better uh, than I'm going to and far more than I'm going to but it essentially takes each bit and gives it um, uh, and, and takes it and inverts it. And so it takes four bits and makes it eight by taking the zero with uh, bit and padding it with its invert uh, with its inverse and then putting um, in the four bit value the second bit and putting that afterwards and then its inverted value. So we end up with uh, eight bits, um, four of which are the original address we're, we're wanting to look at and the other four are the inverse of that address spread out. So when we go into the actual decoders, the uh, what I've called the routers, let's go to the right, then um, these are all mapped out to these AND gates. So these AND gates, uh, each of them, uh, because we have uh, eight possible uh, wires and um, uh, each of them corresponds to one, uh, each two wires corresponds to one state, we can actually, uh, the state of one of our address lines coming in, we can take that and map it to 16 outputs. So we can take f uh, um, our four bits of, mem of address data and actually map that to whatever component we're pointing at because four bits can give us 16 values, unique values. So this is how we could accomplish mapping that. This is essentially a homemade MUX. Um, I, it takes the data coming in, and um, uh, this is the, the routing part of it. So it takes the, the address and then um, uh, uh, puts a control line high for, uh, for whatever function that's going to be. In this case, it's going to be write. So um, the, the data is coming in, and it goes to all of these, um, but um, whichever only one of them at a time will be written to or read from. So that's essentially we could accomplish this with two uh, with, with one mux. Uh, that, that would be it. We, we would have uh, you know, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be very hard to do, um, but it was very, very worthwhile to go through it and do this. So, so let's go ahead and keep the clock on because it's fun. And you can see that we access the, the value, uh, the RAM values a lot. We, we, do, we do it very consistently. Um, and, uh, and, and the RAM is an integral component. This is the, the really the, the entire memory of our computer is stored right here. Everything the computer 
um, everything the computer can execute in terms of a program that we've written needs to fit inside of these 16 bytes. Um, that's pretty limiting, but uh, we're, we're going to fix that moving on. Uh, and in future videos in BB0.3, we'll have a built-in RAM component. We can just specify, hey, I want this many addressable bytes. Uh, we have uh, this many uh, bits in our address, and uh, I want this many bits of data stored at each place in memory. Um, so using that, we'll actually be able to just go ahead and access the full 65,000 values that we would be able to do if we had 8 bits of addressable memory. So that's what we'll get in BB0.3. For now, we only have the 4. So the memory address register, it, uh, it performs a couple of other functions uh, other than just being the memory address register. It, as you can see, it's storing this big value but um, it's, uh, it mirrors what's in the instruction register, um, or it doesn't mirror. <laughs> it doesn't do that at all. But we only care about the lower four bits of what's stored in the memory address register. Um, the upper four bits are uh, c just cast aside. We, we actually don't, uh, we don't care about those. Uh, what we do care about is the lower four bits, and those are what gets piped in to the RAM component, the address line is this. It comes from the splitter here. The upper four bits of uh, of that actually goes down all the way to our HDD, and um, it's it's a bit of a strange uh, a bit of a strange thing that we'll go into when we look at the loading at the beginning of uh, at the beginning of uh, the operation of the computer. It executes a series of load commands, um, and so that utilizes the upper four bits of the memory address register. Um, and and, uh, and this, this whole thing is, is a moot point in BB0.3 because we, we just have the built-in thing. We can right-click, load the image in, and that's our startup procedure. So this has been a brief look at the uh, RAM and the memory address register. Um, uh, please uh, subscribe if this is content that you like. We're going to continue to go through each of the components of BB0.2 and uh, see what it's like to build a computer, uh, one of Ben Eater, a Ben Eater style 8-bit computer in Logisim. And then uh, after we're done looking at all these components, we'll start jumping into the build of BB0.3. Uh, so be sure to hit subscribe and, and give a like. And, uh, and thanks for joining me today.